You the f What the f Where you at? Oh, there you are. I gave you a working car. What the f is that? You see that crack? Well, hey there, fellas. This is gonna be an interesting one. Here we have a lot of a piston for said lot of, and to our knowledge, the pin is slightly offset. And somebody actually asked me a question recently. Like, what's gonna happen if you install the pistons incorrectly? And I do know the theory behind this, but I have no idea what'll happen in practice. Can you tell me what'll happen if you flip a piston by 180 degrees? What's supposed to happen? What do you think? Nothing's gonna happen. Nothing? So it'll be fine? Nothing will happen. Nothing's gonna happen. You'll bugger the skirt. Probably won't seize it. Might destroy the skirt, I'm not sure. Nothing will happen. What's gonna happen? Engine should run, this is symmetrical. This is one thing, but if you were to flip it like so, why shouldn't it work? Look closely. The pin is offset. Delete that. So our poll shows that not many people really know the answer. But we can experiment with this and figure it all out. Okay, let's flip the pistons and find an answer to our question, shall we? And we've dismantled the engine. These are some relatively fresh pistons, that's all good. And even when you look at this one from your perspective, you can clearly tell that the piston pin is slightly offset to the left. And so, yum. Let's go ahead and flip these pistons by 180 degrees, assemble the engine in an improper fashion, and observe what's going to happen. Let's go. Before and after. Okay, so we've got the engine back together after flipping the pistons, that's all good. Let's try starting it. And it started very well, amazingly enough. Okay, now I suggest we get into the theory behind why the piston pin is offset. The whole thing is actually very simple. Without throwing any big words around, what'll happen to the piston when you tilt the conrad? Correct, it's also gonna lean. But when it's inside the cylinders, the walls are gonna prevent it from actually doing that. So the cylinder wall is gonna keep the piston upright, while it's gonna want to follow what the conrod is doing. And it's gonna be putting pressure onto the cylinder wall. And so this transition stage is actually pretty dangerous, because in that moment the piston is wobbling, and potentially damaging the cylinder walls. You're gonna get loud engine operation, and it just won't last as long. And that is where the offset piston pin comes in. You see, the piston is under the most load when it's in TDC, when the mixture is compressed and then ignited. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on the top of the piston, making it a lot harder for the rod to turn relative to it. The rod is trying to get the piston to lean, and that's gonna increase the pressure put onto the cylinder walls. But given that the pin is offset, pressure is equally distributed over the top of the piston, but on one side you got more leverage, and if you were to press down on it here, that'll obviously tilt the piston the other way, and that's what the pressure does for you. It allows the piston to maintain a vertical position, while lowering the pressure exerted on the cylinder walls, and the piston itself for that matter. Otherwise it would have been rattling around in there. That would have led to accelerated wear, not to mention that it just would have made the engine really noisy. Which is something you definitely don't want. But let's go ahead and start it and go do a bit of driving. After that we'll tear the engine apart and see what condition the pistons are in. Alright. Honestly... I'm giving it some gas and it seems to be doing alright. No signs of any abnormalities. And we're out on the road. Car is driving perfectly fine. 
just like any other engine. Nothing about how this engine is operating uh, comes off as even remotely suspicious to me. So look here. I do feel like it has developed a minor sort of rumbly noise. And I wasn't even out there for that long. Working out what has become of the internals is impossible at this stage. And so I'd better call in... Sergey, get over here. You are gonna drive to the country this weekend, aren't you? I know you always do. You want me to put some miles on this? Yeah. You have a place where you can give it the beans, right? Well, it's not the winter, but I'll find some place. It's settled then. In order to get to the bottom of this, we'll give the car to Sergei for the weekend. He'll drive to the country to visit his relatives. Okay, so the car is yours. See you next week. Seven days later. And he's back. Morning. Hey there. Good morning. So what's up? It doesn't seem happy. What do you mean? Right there, did you hear it? And it's ref hunting. And it won't pull. Won't pull. What about the oil? Check the oil. And it's stalled. Does it even have any oil? It does. You checked it? Yep. Okay, fire it up. Can you give it some revs? That is a nasty noise. Yeah, I can hear it too. Right, the engine is obviously starting to deteriorate. It was operating perfectly initially. Where were you driving it? Here, there. Honestly, we thought that you weren't going to make it back. I drove out to pick mushrooms. Oh, is that right? Well done. What's the odometer saying? I did around 500 kilometers. Give or take 50, right? No need to be too specific. Anyway. Now, I actually want to go for a drive, to see where the engine is at currently. I do, of course, recall how it drove before when we just put everything together. And now I'm going to give it some, to see what its current state is. Here we go. It definitely feels worse. Like, it actually feels really bad. Yum. After driving around for an extended period of time? Yeah, look at that. I mean, it feels fine more or less, but it keeps stalling. Was it stalling on you? Every now and then? Okay, so before that was barely audible, but after you've done some driving, oh my goodness. Wasn't knocking when I just got back, so this is on you. This is your fault. No, it's all on you. Now it is making a ton of noise. Curious what that's all about. Have another go. We do need to finish the job. I don't think I'll make it back, though. You won't? We thought you wouldn't the first time. Yeah, that noise is just... You know what? This thing does actually drive. But the noise it's making is definitely suspect. And it seems to be getting worse. Or the pistons that loose? But you rev it up and the noise goes away. Whoa there. This is you, not me. It's your fault.
What happened, though? Looks like a hole in the block. A hole in... The f***. What the f***? Where you at? Oh, there you are. I gave you a working car. What the f*** is that? You see that crack? Well, block is slightly cracked. Slightly, you say. Yeah, so this is a bad situation, guys. On this side, you got an enormous hole in the engine block. <laughs> and for some reason, the coolant evacuated instead of the motor oil. Meanwhile, on this side, we have a fracture. You got a crack down there that's about this size. And it has spread out by a couple of millimeters. This is from the cylinder. You can see all of the damage. Any honing left? Nope. <laughs> No, but you can see the scratches on it. This is a bit of cylinder. This was on the inside. This was outside. Okay, so we've removed the oil pan, drained the remaining coolant, so that's all good and well. And over here on the right, yeah. This is honestly looking pretty bad. The part holding the engine mount has been ripped out, but I mean... The whole thing is just broken. You got an enormous hole. We even lost a chunk of cylinder liner. Yeah, this is very bad. Yeah, this is obviously totaled. And we got a crack on the other side. With all of the experiments we've conducted, the engine blocks have always held up. They're quite durable, and how we got here beats the hell out of me. Oh, everything is fine in here. Hold up. This is how it should be. What do you mean? Two should be in BDC, two in TDC. Well, don't we have two of each? I mean, one and four have to be up top. Press down on number one. Did you disconnect it? I thought we lost one. Okay, so what do we see looking from up here? I don't see anything suspicious. Aside from Piston 2 being disoriented. But that's because the con rod is broken. Wow, that is one hell of a gap, holy cow. The Piston Crown... As we all know, it has a slight cone shape to it. Anyway, between the wall and the Piston Top, there is a noticeable gap. Especially in 2. Oh, wow, is it wobbling. You see that? And here we have the culprit. This is broken. The block is broken, a rod, we got a wobbling piston. But let's remove the pistons and have a closer look at them. Also examine the cylinder walls. Okay, so what do we got? Number four? This was in cylinder four. And it looks all right. Though straight away I can tell you, looking at the skirt, see how much of it was rubbing against the cylinder? You shouldn't see anything like this on a fresh piston. That is some serious wear. But then the stress must have been really intense. Now let's have a look at number three. Oh my. So this is number three. Better memorize which one is which, but then is there really any point? Number one. This is looking really bad. You got scratches. Holy cow. Now, to get a clearer view... Oh, wow, holy cow. Look at these rub marks. The skirt on this piston... It really did not... Enjoy coming into contact with the cylinder wall. But then that might have been a mutual feeling. I mean, check this out. Those are some really nasty rub marks. And that tells us it was getting twisted and not in the direction you'd want it to. Yeah, there is a lot of wear on all of them. Pistons that we've extracted so far. They have sustained a lot of damage. Okay, now let's have a look at number two. Well, it doesn't want to be extracted. And check this out. Yeah, this is horribly mangled. 
You got those scratches. I mean, those could be from when it broke off. But then you know what? These seem to have already been there, these grooves. On one side, and you got some on the other side as well. It was having a really hard time reciprocating. When it got pinched, the stress levels increased, and we lost a rod. But then I wouldn't be surprised if this was just a coincidence. It's tough to see with any certainty. As for the cylinders, you can clearly see where the piston was pressing up against the walls. The side-to-side -side motion left some clearly visible marks. And uh, yeah, this was operating under a lot more stress. As this sort of wear is not something that manifests after such a short distance driven. And so those are the results of this experiment where we flipped the pistons by 180 degrees. Whether this is a coincidence or not, that's a tough call. But those are the results. Make sure to assemble your engines by the book. And that's all I got for you. Catch you guys later.